All right, we're back more with the Sports Call, sponsored by Ireland Contracting on the Borders and Borders Hotline. It's 412-575-2600. Bob Pompiani and Gene Collier with you tonight. So Pitt goes on and wins 89-86. Duquesne was involved in a very close game. Uh, did not see a final of that as we were getting ready for this show. Duquesne won by five. Right? Duquesne won by five. It's in the screen. I didn't see that. I'm glad you have eyes in the back of your head <laughs> or in the front of your head, too. Glad they're there. <laughs> Wherever they're there. <laughs> so congrats to Dukes at home at the Plumbo Center beating Fordham. Tales correspondent Gene Collier at I the got. Palumbo Center. I can still read, so there you go. <laughs> All right, we're going to talk about that and more. I, I also want to get into uh, the Pittsburgh Pirates, and we didn't have a chance to talk to you real quick, Gene, about Jeff Bannister. Yeah. Uh, what, are your, what are your thoughts about that? A lot of people believe that he's not only a guy who's been here, a bench coach, a, you know, a manager who's won back-to-back -back division titles in the Rangers, but he represents someone who could be a good fit if – they ever find the day to you know move on from Clint Hurdle? Yeah, we're making a lot of coaching changes here on the. I'm show. just asking. I'm asking. We've got for that. Tomlin out for Mike <laughs> Check and Hurdle out for uh, Jeff Bannister. I, I mean, I like Jeff Bannister. He's a great baseball man. Uh, really, really knows what he's doing. The Pirates are making all kinds of peripheral uh, additions, none of which are going to make them a better team, in my view. But you know, we've got to talk about something. Yeah. Well, so far they need more help, and in, in that. You know, lineup for sure. Yeah, I mean, on the field they need help. They yeah. do, and that division has gotten tougher. So we'll talk more about that as we go along. In the meantime, Dan and Alequip is first up tonight. Hey, Dan, how are you? Hey, Bob, how are you? Hey, Gene, how are you? Merry hey, Christmas, Dan. guys. Merry sure. serving Christmas. As well. Okay, sure. Um, yeah, it's, it's a big one. There you go, from Alequip. But hey, I'm just so happy. Wow, we finally got a win. After what, 23? I mean, we go 0 and 18 last year. Yeah, it was 23 yeah, in a row. The concern was with the 16 for 33 on the free throws, but. Wow, what a game. Yeah. yeah, it was. And, you know, those guys have a lot of guts, those freshmen. I like both of them. Actually, I like three of them. Terrell Brown, I think, yeah. is a sophomore. Uh, he's a nice big guy, but they're going to need more. And and I think Jeff Capel will prove to be a pretty good recruiter. So that's good news, and thanks for the call. But, Gene, 16 for 32 from the foul. That's 50%. You can't, yeah. you can't miss. And at the end of the game, they missed two foul shots that would have made it a two-possession game. It gave Louisville one last chance, which you really don't want to give that team. Yeah, and they also failed to get a shot off in the last 26 seconds of a tie game, which you cannot do. Or you shouldn't win if, that's, if that happens. But uh, you, should, <laughs> you shouldn't win if you sh shoot 16 for 33 from the line either. But, you know, credit to Pitt that they did under those circumstances. All right, let's go out to line one. That's Ed in Mount Lebanon. Ed, what's up? How are you? Hey, how you doing, Bob? Good, thanks. Good. First, I want to wish you and Gene a happy new year. Happy to Thank you. And uh, I want to tell you, after the show, make sure Gene takes you out and buys you a sandwich and a couple of beers for money in you. <laughs> I've always <laughs> asked. He won't do it. He's waiting for the Oh, well, that cheats game. Okay, <laughs> well, um, I want to talk about the Penguins. Um, on this five-game road trip they have, I think it's crucial that they win at least three or four out of five. Why do you say that? They're, they're right in the mix when it comes to the top teams in the East. I don't think they have to win anything out there, really. Well, I mean, it'd be nice, you know, to keep him in close to the Washington Capitals. Yeah, I mean, if you had told me this about a month ago when they were really struggling, yes. But, hey, listen, if you want to win a division, they have shown that you don't have to win a division to win a Stanley Cup. I get what you're saying. I don't feel the pressure that you may be applying to them. Uh, Gene, I thought, you know, they've been playing very well. They seem to play better on the road at times than they do at home. They're getting really good goalie play. And Matt Murray has been just superb. I don't know what other word to use uh, they did suffer an injury, two of them actually. Patrick Hornquist mm -hmm. got hit in the face last night. I'm not sure what his status is, but yeah. Zach Aston Reese in a fight yeah, hit um, a player right in the head and I think broke his hand. I'm not sure what he did to his hand, but he's on IR. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, the Penguins have won eight out of nine. Uh, if you want them to win three of these next five, that's uh, 11 out of um, 14. <laughs> Uh, you know, in any any kind of extended road trip, you'd like to get half the points. I, you know, I think that's a reasonable uh, expectation. You know, the Penguins have given themselves some room now with that you know, winning eight and nine and moved back into contention. So uh, the road trip is uh, uh, not, it's not crucial really to get anything out of this road trip. It's still January. Yeah. Um, you know, going back to that fight last night, Zach Aston Reese and Connor Sevier. Uh, right. The you know, the conversation comes up, now why do they still fight? It's the only professional sports league that allows fighting. Uh, we saw a big one last night with Ryan Reeves, and I still wonder why anyone wants to fight with Ryan Reeves out in Vegas. Uh, Adam McQuaid took him on and had no chance in that one. But do you still feel like, you know, I mean, look at the Penguins. They've lost two guys to injury this year because of fights, hurting themselves while fighting. 
Is it that necessary for the game, and why doesn't the NHL stop it? They don't want to. If they want why to though? stop it, what's the justification? Like, there's no fighting in the college game. There's very little fighting in the playoffs. Um, you know, it's part of the uh, culture of that league, and um, you know they're they're not about to stop it. Uh, you know, and you know part of the reason is the fans in in the building. What what do the fans in the building do when there's a fight? They go crazy. Wow, that is especially uh, in Vegas where they have all yeah. sorts of heavyweight championships on the line. Right, but uh, but um, you know I don't know. It's not. It doesn't look like it's coming out of the game. I'd love to see it go away. I would. All right, let's go out to Herb in Renfrew. What's up, Herb? How are you? Pretty good. Hi, Bob and Gene. Hi. I, I just wanted to say I read Gene's column in the Sunday Post Gazette. Be careful Thank what you. you want for, and really enjoyed it. And my question was, uh, everyone wants to everyone wants to to trade AB, but wouldn't it be better to try to reason with them? Because uh -huh. the Steelers' window of opportunity is closing soon. You know, with Ben's age and and maybe he's. Because he's acting the way he's acting, it's closing it sooner than he should. I, you know, you can make arguments on both sides. Interesting, Gene, your take on that. You wrote about it, but what's your take? Uh, my, my opinion, I don't have a take, Bob. A take is a verb. You take something okay. somewhere else, okay? <laughs> you uh, have a hot take? I have a viewpoint. <laughs> uh, and it's basically that, uh, you know, I, I don't care if A.B. goes. Uh, I'm tired of his act. I think most people at the Steelers' offices are. But the Steelers are very prudent about this kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, they're going to they're gonna be reluctant uh, to trade him uh, because they're in a bad position trying to trade him. They're not going to get value back for him. So I think they're going to try and reason with him. I don't think they're going to succeed. I, I, as I said on Sunday, I think they have about a 20% chance of, you know, working this out with A.B. and keeping him. But... I don't expect them to, and I'm not, I'm not sure that they want to. I, I just know that they like to be careful on these things. I mean, there was a time in his career when Ben was embarrassing this, the organization, mm -hmm. but uh, they held on to him because, you know, they're in the winning business. They are. We're due for a break. We're in the, uh, we're in taking the advertising a break business, <laughs> break business <laughs> and we're going to do that right now. 412-575-2600, that is the number. We'll be back with more of your calls and tweets next right here on the Sports Call.